On behalf of the graduating class of 2001, 
We would like to welcome everyone in sharing the significant milestone in our lives. We would especially like to thank our families, friends, teachers, and school board members for not only attending the ceremony today, but more importantly, for getting us, the graduates, here as well. To our parents, grandparents, and relatives, we thank you for making us the young men and women that we have become today. Without the support of our families, we would have never reached this point in our lives. Though we may have had our ups and downs, and maybe even more downs than ups, we needed you every step of the way. Thanks for all the great help. And to the class of 2001, we have come so far together, yet when we look back on the time that we shared, it seems as though it was so short. We've survived the scrapes and bruises of elementary school, the drama of middle school, and of course, the weariness of our high school years. However, the hardest challenge we have yet had to face has definitely been the past two weeks. Many of us have been suffering from a severe case of senioritis. And though it has been hard to overcome, we sit here today on our graduation and think to ourselves, am I really ready for this? We have worked the past 12 years of our lives to obtain this goal. And now that we're here, we're working to move on. We will all move in different directions and encounter different experiences. But wherever we go and whatever we do, we will always hold this memory. We will always remember the class of 2001. I would like to start today by personally thanking the two people who have had the strongest influence on my life. Mom, Dad, thank you for all the sacrifices you have made in trying to help me become the man I am today. Your hard work did not go unnoticed. And now, to the class of 2001. It has been a long time coming, but the past is history now and it is time to blaze a new trail. Let us not forget the friends we have lost, the championships we have won, and the bonds we have shared. But we must forge ahead with no fears or regrets. A line in our class song reads, I'm beginning to find that when I drive myself, my light is found. We all must drive ourselves into the future with open minds and open hearts. It is at this point in our lives when we must follow through with our dreams and turn them into reality. So the voyage has now begun, and although many of us will be headed in different directions, just remember, as long as you drive yourself, your light will be found. Thank you. It is my pleasure and an honor to introduce to you this evening two students who have earned a grade point in excess of four during their four years of high school. Valedictorians for the class of 2001 are Erica Burke and Sarah Kellogg. The salutatorian for the class of 2001 is Mr. Ryan Shedd. started coming to an end and the decision of who was to speak today became an issue, I became nervous. I knew that I was going to be asked 
but I didn't know how I wanted to respond. The idea of me speaking at graduation in front of thousands of people was terrifying. I had always planned on declining the offer. I never thought I could do this. But as I looked around, I saw my parents and how much this would mean to them. I saw classmates who were eager to speak today, but afraid they wouldn't have the chance. And I saw my friends who had always assured me that I would never fail. Seeing all of this allowed me to realize just how much speaking today really means to me. How I couldn't give up this opportunity and how important it is for me to do something that I never thought I could do. Throughout these past four years, we've all been faced with obstacles we didn't think we could overcome. Some of them were simple. Those of us who were afraid to raise our hands to ask questions as freshmen can now speak easily in front of our classes. Some of us tried out for teams when we never thought we could make it, but we did. For some, the obstacles have been much larger. Many of us have lived here forever and have had to work hard in maintaining our friendships. Still others have had the difficulty of moving here and trying to make friends in a small town. We've all had to get over the deaths of classmates, and while some of us have had to deal with losing family members, others have had to deal with bringing new ones into this world. As we leave high school today, we're going to be faced with even higher hurdles, but we can all, we've all grown immensely over the years, and we will be able to climb over them. Now, as I go to open houses and get together with my friends, I realize just how much we really have grown. As we go through pictures from elementary school and see how silly we looked and remember how cool we thought we were, and we look back on times when we hung out behind the hill at football games, and then we remember when we finally watched our friends play in those games once we were in high school. Then, after all the remember wins, when I'm afraid I'm about to cry because all this is over, I realize how exciting it is that we get to start something new and how everything we've gone through in the past will help us get through even more in the future. While the safety of always knowing what we have to do is over, we now have the freedom to decide that for ourselves. No matter what it is that we decide on, no matter where we go from here, I'm sure that we will all end up doing things that we never thought we could do. As I stand here today, I'm still scared, but I did this. And I know we can all overcome the obstacles in our future. Writing this speech was the most challenging and the most important assignment I have ever accepted in my years at CHS. I realized it was my last chance to address my classmates and try to say something meaningful. As I sorted through messages and themes in my head, I kept coming back to one idea. I wanted my speech to be different. This was a much more difficult task than I imagined. The only messages I could think of were ones that had been reiterated in every commencement speech in history. I also realized that tomorrow, most of you won't remember a word I've said. <laughs> then it occurred to me that I was trying too hard to be profound. I decided I would stop trying to be earth-shattering and start just sharing some of my thoughts. In attempting to sum up the last 12 years, it's hard to know where to begin. Friendships have come and gone, and I know I've changed a lot. It's incredible the people I've met this year, people that I've been going to school with since freshman year, since sixth grade, or even since kindergarten, people that I never thought I could have anything in common with, or people that I didn't have anything in common with until now. It's funny how the dawning of a life-changing event can really put things in perspective. At the end of my junior year, I was offered a unique opportunity to graduate a year early with the class of 2000. It was a difficult decision because many of my friends graduated last year and college was sounding pretty good. I reluctantly chose not to graduate early because I wasn't sure that I was truly ready. Never did I imagine that I would be standing here today talking about how grateful I am that I didn't. My senior year was the best ever. We went homecoming when no one thought we could. We came in third place in the state at We the People when no one thought we were ready. And we pulled our, prank, our senior prank on the last day of school when no one thought we would remember. <laughs> oh. 
But as I stood in the rain and watched my car get towed away that day, <laughs> I realized just how much our class has united this year. We went from a class that wouldn't even stand at pep assemblies to a class that won pep assemblies. Beginning today, that newfound unity will begin to fade. Life has already begun pulling us in different directions. We've heard all the cliches about high school being the best time of your life or high school being the worst time of your life. At this point, I'm not really sure, but for the last few months, I've been trying to anticipate where high school will rank in my life. I feel very fortunate that I have only one regret. That regret is not appreciating my classmates sooner. I had no idea how many incredible people there are in the class of 2001. I'm speaking on behalf of the poets, artists, musicians, craftsmen, and athletes sitting before you. In a class of 219 seniors, eight are athletic state champions, holding six state titles, including a three-peat. But even when our achievements are not so clearly visible, the depth of talent that exists in this graduating class is more than meets the eye. We may not always be the fastest, the strongest, or even the most efficient, but we do succeed. I was honored when I learned that I would speak on behalf of my class today. Yet I also realized that every senior here would say something different if given the same opportunity. Being in high school is not a uniform experience for everyone. Yet we managed to work together without sacrificing individuality. We did it. We were part of a group. We were part of a class. But we didn't compromise ourselves. Thank you. The Department of Education under President Ronald Reagan established the Presidential Scholar Awards Program in an effort to define a nationwide standard of academic excellence for high school students. Recipients must complete a prescribed curriculum, including four years of English, four years of history, three years of science, three years of math, two years of the same foreign language and computer programming, while maintaining a 3.5 grade point average. They must also achieve at least 24 on the ACT test or some other national standardized test. The faculty of Coldwater High School is proud to honor the, follow, the following Presidential Scholar Award winners. Please hold your applause until all are standing. Stacy Brown, Erica Burke, Brad Chester, Carolyn Glowey, Carolyn Habril, Angie Kaspersky, Sarah Kellogg, Kathleen Klotz, Matthew Kramer, Brianne Lee, <laughs> Stephanie Melton, Caitlin Moorhead, <laughs> Dustin Moore, Mark Selveter, Ryan Shedd, Anna Watkins, Mary White, and Daryl Yearling. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the Presidential Scholars of the Class of 2001. John Vance was a 1975 graduate of Coldwater High School. We believe he represents the highest standards of char character and achievement to which all students should aspire. He was not just an athlete, nor an honor student, nor a student leader. He was all of these. On May 25th of 1982, John lost a year-long battle with cancer. In memory of John Vance, we the faculty and staff of Coldwater High School honor Aaron Taggart, who represents the high standards that John excelled. Aaron, please come forward. I can't throw it as far as you can throw a shot.
Rebecca Herman from Germany, and today I represent the foreign exchange students of CHS this year. These are Ai Kansawa from Japan, Carlos Salazar from Venezuela, Eli Klatter from Germany, Giovanna Soares from Brazil, Juan Pablo Arango from Colombia, Julia Glinenko from Kazakhstan, Juno Xion from Korea, Mark Benson from Denmark, Niels Haye from Germany, Sonja Eberhardt from Germany, and me. <laughs> um, looking back, I can say that altogether it was an exciting, unforgettable year, or for some of us, only half a year. We'll never forget the great times we had here with you. Neither will we forget the bad, hilarious, and embarrassing ones. And there were quite a few of those, I can tell you. <laughs> Not only were there language difficulties, where we tried to persuade people that we grow pepperoni in our garden, just to find, and not knowing that um, it's a meat and we actually meant chili pepper. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> but also were the cultural misunderstandings, which led up to some very interesting and unique stories. How often did we have to tell people that Denmark has its own language, that there are cars and TVs in Colombia and Venezuela? How often were we scared to say the wrong things and be rude to someone just to find that people were teasing us? The worst ones were definitely members of our families, and I want to thank each one of them. Thank you for pulling our legs, for laughing at us and with us, for making us wash the dishes, for grounding us, whether it was necessary or not. <laughs> for making us part of the family, and that's what we truly became. Forever part of the Ashleys, the Burns, the Everetts, Goats, Kings, Canemans, the Merkels, Mulalis, Stevens and Yusuf, the Stigneys and the Strangs. Thank you. But also outside the families, we had some very fun times, involving, again, teasing, making fun of us. But then, on the other hand, having the greatest friends we'd ever wanted for such a short time. I'm talking about the students of CHS, our classmates, teammates, and their families. You all gave us so much. You helped us by noticing and getting to know us, by taking us places, showing and explaining us things laughing with us, hugging us, showing that we're wanted and needed. Thank you. Also there to help were our teachers, counselors, and coaches. Sure enough, they also had to make their comments about us foreigners. But when we had a problem, they were there for us. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to point out someone else who is here for us, literally. Two special guests who came here all the way from Germany and Brazil to see their daughters graduating. I'd like to say special thanks to Giovanna's mom, Masarillo, and my mom, Julianne. You should know how much this means to us and how much we love you. Graduation is a time to say goodbye, but also, um, no, sorry. Graduation is a time to say thank you, but also goodbye. And for us, this means a goodbye for a long, long time, maybe forever. It's a tough time. I think everybody has their own way of saying goodbye. And I don't, I don't want to be the one doing that here and now for all of us. I'll stay with the one thing I really want to say, and I can't say often enough, which is thank you from all of us. So it'll be, tak, spasibo, danke, obrigado. Gracias, aligado, kamsa amida, thank you. I would like to introduce to you the CHS senior choir members and Mr. Ford.
This indeed is a day to, uh, designed to recognize student achievement. In so doing, I'd like to take uh, just a moment and to congratulate Coach Roger Fuller and our girls' state championship golf team. Three consecutive years. This is my 23rd graduation, the 10th at Coldwater, and my final commencement exercise. I'd like to say to the audience, the parents, students, teachers, administrators, I've enjoyed working with you. It's been a pleasure to serve you as your superintendent for the past 10 years. Now let's move on to the real issues here today. Will the members of the class of 2001 please rise? On behalf of the faculty, administration of Coldwater High School, I present the class of 2001 to the Board of Education. And in so doing, certify that each member has met every requirement for a diploma and is entitled to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations to all. By the authority of the state of Michigan, vested in the Board of Education, and by them delegated to me as president, I hereby confer upon you the diploma of Coldwater High School. Will you please be seated? Okay. <laughs> Now, if you're ready, will the graduates please come to the platform to receive their diplomas? All set? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2001, Caroline Chapin Haverhill. Ryan William Shedd. Sarah Lee Kellogg. Erica Lynn Burke. Caitlin McCord Moorhead. Rebecca Herman. Anna Christina Watkins. Carolyn Grace Glowy. Rianne Carla Lee. Perry Janelle Norman. Courtney Lynn Lawhead. Erica Lorraine Severson.
Lindsay Marie Kibalowski. Heather Ashley Yenny. Chelsea May Collins. Nicole Marie Airy. Mary Ellen Reed. Jennifer Lynn Albert. Rebecca Lynn Cohen. Danielle Marie Davidson. Jamie Marie Clark. Amy Marie Belot. Crystal Blair Wilson. Mandy Lynn Parker. Yeah, I have to have that. You're so cute. Lisa Marie Snyder. Donald Keith Latimer. Timothy Lee Van Asdale. Amanda Elizabeth Labadee. Brandon Michael Taggart. Ulrich Lowell Deller. John Wesley Massey. Brett Adam Sabatis. Andrew Francis Seiler. Holly Noel Partial. Yeah. Aaron Bethany Jansen. Jamie Lee Morrill. Rebecca Ann Tremblay. Kristen Nicole Diamond. Chad Allen Cook. Julia Glenenko. Shandell Christian Shonaboom. Ai Kanzawa. You made it. <laughs> Joel Brandon Looper. Oh. 
Abraham John Demond. Jason Andrew Cook. Daryl Allen Yearling. Matthew David Rassler. Adam James Horde. Christopher Lee Knapp. Nathaniel Allen Pyatt. April Lynn Warner. <laughs> Nicole Ann Rathbun. Michael Neil Albright. Michael Gleason. Adam Christopher Beam. Grant Gregory Morrison. Matthew James Crawford. Gregory John Beechler. Justin Edward Van Dusen. Nasser Hussein Sharif. You didn't lose it. Kimberly Loretta Webb. Angela Sarah Elkins. Rihanna Joe Scott. <laughs> David Rocky Step. I gotta do this. <laughs> Nicholas Richard Curry. Jared Austin Triplett. Cameron Bruce Rust. Leo James Carrion. Sarah Elizabeth Chapin. Amy Catherine Musser. Crystal Sue Harvey.
Nicole Kathleen Swift. <laughs> Tasha K. Blunt. <laughs> Janae? Ricky. Middle name? Jean. Jean. Okay. Ricky Jean Bice. Thanks. I appreciate your parents. Mary Jo White. <laughs> Jessica Lynn Parsons. Hey, Cherie. Don't say Sherry, Cherie. I will. Cherie Vining. Albert C. Riddle. My middle name's Dan L. Dan L? Yeah. Okay. Destiny Danelle Gallup. Jared Aaron Wasserman. Jessica Ann Sackler. Rebecca Ann Trammell. Chastity Lynn Spots. Brian Thomas Brown. <laughs> Timothy George Swan. <laughs> Gary Lee Reed. Morgan Virginia Smolecki. <laughs> Stephanie Lynn Renner. <laughs> Stacy Renee Brown. Tiffany Lynn Tomlinson. No. Evan Mark Burgess. <laughs> Allison Marie Foley. Frank John Plodzik the second. Brandy Marie Chatfield. Rachel Elizabeth Hilliard. Richard Barbie. Matthew Paul Barrows. Brian Dwayne Langwell. Kelly Lee Manzer. Should Graf? Yeah, Graf. <laughs> Eric Allen Graf. <laughs> Michael Allen Sickles. <laughs> Brian Lee Hurley.
Jeffrey Quent Watson. Timothy James Snyder. Khaled Mohammed Ahmed. Yaya? Yeah. Yaya Ahmed Umari. Okay. Edward Allen Haynes. <laughs> Kelly Jean Radabaugh. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Staley. Nathaniel Earl Lynn. Caitlin Ann Parshall. Kathleen Nicole Klotz. Mark Edward Salveter. Trevor Kent Berry. <laughs> Carrie Ann Gatke. <laughs> Dustin Michael Blasky. <laughs> Christine Marie Putnam. Dustin Thomas Rose. Christopher Allen Parshall. Nicole Ray Milks. Shannon Elizabeth McKinney. I think so. Brid Bridget Lashawn Flegel. Yeah, Bridget. Woo! Janella Renee Engelhart. Ryan James Hurley. Go get him. Aaron Daniel Taggart. Aaron J. Lawrence. Thomas William Bryant. Eric Charles Sherman. Aman Duper. Sarah Ann Brock. Christy Lynn Hart. You'll make it. Christina Sue Trombley. Carissa Lynn Friend.
Jessica Marie Fast. Robert Eugene Case. Bradley Scott Chester. We can do this. <laughs> Ashley Michelle Dillon. No, so don't fall. Christina Michelle Deloof. Sonia Eberhard. <laughs> Jesse Lonchkowski. <laughs> James Dean Britt. Bethany Hope Shook. Kimberly Ann Fuller. Travis Michael Crank. John R. Travis. Arthur Ray Borgert, Jr. <laughs> Becky Sue Thurman. It's blank. <laughs> Samantha Elizabeth Richards. Amanda Ann Grace. Jennifer Lynn Weller. Rachel Marie Miller. Christopher Michael Kelly. Adam J. Sloan. Tyler Joseph Ebbett. I just want to say, say thanks for teaching me so good. <laughs> yeah, that gets recorded. <laughs> Angela Ann Kaspersky. Eric Christian Tracy. You can do it. Thanks, You're welcome, Dave. David Allen Bunt. If I trip, can you say my name over again? No. <laughs> Don't trip. Christopher Joseph Ambrose. Dana Glenn Lewis. Nicholas James Williams. We're getting backed up here. <laughs> Gary Robert Baker. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. <laughs> Kevin David Hodson. Michelle Ann Adolph. Brock Michael Snyder.
Ryan Michael Camp. Adam Lee Mason. David Christopher Gay. James Vincent Schaefer. Richard Joseph Keller. Joseph Andrew Wright. Troy Marshall Price. Ryan Randall Marquardt. Ready, Cole. Jesse Wayne Griffin. Matthew Ryan Friend. Corey Allen Dow. Jonathan McKinnon Klein. Andrew William Labadee. Christopher Michael Allen. Matthew Robert Kramer. Christopher Michael Traskus. Eric Robert Cozart. <laughs> Stephanie Allison Melton. <laughs> Kara Susan Parsons. Lindsay Ann Alexander. Morgan Christine Dean. Amanda Marie Schreider. Samantha Yvonne Saltzgiver. Michelle Lynn Case. Crystal Lynn Markley. Thomas Ryan Merkel. Scott Warren Brady, Jr. Rodney Trey Engelhart. Joshua Adam Brewer. Mark LaCour Benson. Travis Brett Robertson. Wow. 
Eric David McKenney. <laughs> Jason Paul Easterday. <laughs> Daniel Brian Van Allen. Elizabeth Plate. <laughs> Giovanna Romalio Suarez. Carlos Oswaldo Salazar. Matthew David Cotton. Candace Marie Everett. Shane Marie Rumsey. <laughs> Kelly Marie Thompson. <laughs> Niels Haya. Juan Pablo Arango. <laughs> Shauna Marie Nyson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2001. On behalf of the Coldwater High School graduating class of 2001, I would like to extend our sincere thanks to all moms, dads, grandparents, siblings, and friends here to share our big day. But my true purpose here today is to thank our parents. This, however, is an impossible task. How can you thank someone who has been there for you no matter what? How can you thank someone who helps you set goals, then stands behind you every step of the way towards fulfilling those goals? How can you thank someone who is always encouraging you to do your very best, but is right beside you to pick up the pieces if you fall short? How can you thank someone whose major purpose in life is to give you opportunities that you never had? How can you thank someone who unselfishly works themselves to the bone so that you can experience things that they never had and taught you to never give up? How can you thank someone who encouraged you to participate in sports, music, and all sorts of clubs, and then put their lives on hold to attend the event just to see you, even if you were the star or the bit player? How can you thank someone who has been responsible for waking you up for every day of school all your life? <laughs> After giving this speech a great deal of thought, I have decided that I cannot answer any of these questions satisfactorily. There is simply no way you can effectively thank someone who has taken you from the cradle to graduation while worrying about you every single minute of the day. It is an impossible feat. As teenagers, we believe we can survive without parents. But now, at the end of my high school career, I now realize we would be lost without the love and guidance our parents provide. Therefore, mom, dad, and all moms and dads of the class of 2001 Thanks from the bottom of our hearts for standing by us even when we pushed you away. We really do love you and, believe it or not, appreciate everything you have done for us, even though we are not very good at showing it. We will thank you every day of our lives for your love and sacrifice. Thanks. Henry Adams said that a teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. 
Teachers constantly try to inspire their students and exert an influence that affects eternity. Thank you, teachers, for what you do for us in and out of the classroom. Thank you for never giving up on us when it seemed like there was nothing else you could do. Thank you for endless hours of preparation, just so we could learn something. Thank you for pushing us always to do our best, even when we didn't think our best was good enough. Thank you for believing in us. I know teachers in CHS who've dressed up on almost all dress-up days, teachers who are ready to sign up for activities as judges or chaperones. Teachers who, become, who became our advisors when no one else wanted to. <laughs> Ms. Langley and Mr. Demeester, thank you for helping us win homecoming when we ourselves had doubts about it. Thank you, teachers, for doing all these and more. I cannot say that I will remember all my teachers' names. Even if I do, I can't guarantee I'll remember what subjects they taught. But there will be some things I'm sure to remember the most important things. I will remember how Mr. Stevens made us all go to those Sunday meetings for, the, for we the people and then placing third in the state. I will remember how Mr. Mullally made us rewrite our personal statements until, until they were nearly perfect. I will remember how Mrs. Scheidler helped me enjoy algebra. I will remember how Mr. Demeester made the thought of dissecting frogs not so gross. To those I didn't mention, I do remember, and I will remember. I cannot even begin to say what influence all my teachers have had in my life. Just know that the inspiration and influence you've bestowed upon me will be ubiquitous and will be nearly insuperable by any other. And so I thank you for always inspiring us. The gratitude that we feel is ineffable. And yes, I think you have affected eternity. Thank you. It appears that among this graduating class are people too diverse, with experiences too different, to ever take in the same lessons and qualities from the duration of their time in high school. Some were the basketball stars. Some always held the lead in the school play. Some were amazing musicians that left the crowd in awe with an unforgettable performance, while others were just that crowd. Some held the hidden talent to sing, and others just admired their music. Some of us played the game, some of us sat the bench, and some of us watched from the stadium. And still, from every perspective, in every lifestyle, and in each experience, some things were consistent. Each of us had that special friend who knew us better than we knew ourselves. Each of us felt the warmth of some stranger's smile as they passed us in the hall. Each of us allowed the seed of confidence to grow as our parents stood behind us unconditionally. Each of us experienced a feeling of dedication, sometimes even with that unyielding push of a supportive teacher to catch us if we slip from our tracks. And we will all, despite our diversity, despite our uniqueness, take the same things with us as we leave high school. We will all have the same memory of the incredible friends, family, and teachers that touched our lives. No words can express the gratitude we would like to give to those who made us who we are. Nothing I can possibly say can explain the worth of a teacher who gives their time to teach a lesson just because you want to learn. No thank you can fully express the love and appreciation we each have for our parents, siblings, and teachers. The tests hung on the refrigerator and their obsession with what we swore were, no, were accomplishments that were no big deal meant the world to each of us. And the proof that someone believed in us, that someone thought we were worth their energy, and the sacrifice of hours upon compounded hours of their lives gave us all we ever wanted. Because of all these people who listened when we needed a friend, who gave the advice we so desperately needed, because of all these people that made us cr crave that success once more as they shared in the glory of all the small tastes we sampled, because all of the small accomplishments and each tiny certificate weighed as heavy achievements in the minds of our family and teachers because they believed in us, because they wanted it as much as we did, because they cared, we made it here today. Now as we move on to find the security and satisfaction of careers we are passionate about and to fulfill the dreams that we've had since we were five and to form even more of those lasting and meaningful bonds we have already known, each of us will take the memory. Each of us will recall the incredible people 
who provide us with the skills, confidence, and love to aspire to obtain our goals. Because of you, we each carry confidence, potential, and hope as we leave this place. We will forever see your image in the distance as we walk away in search of something more. Thank you. On behalf of the class, the high school, the staff, and the administration, I would like to take just a few seconds and present Mr. Shinnery this small plaque, which is just a token, basically, of what he has meant for the school system and personally what he's meant for me. For his dedication and support, we hope him all the good things in retirement. Thanks, Bill. Chairman, we have a much bigger plaque for you. <laughs> Caitlin. Okay. Graduation, huh? Well, we are the class of 2001. Dance. Relish in the vibrancy of your spirit. Years from now, you'll revisit your youthful journal and we're calling away you can't yet comprehend on just how much quality to your day existed. You were not as insignificant as you perceived. Don't have low expectations. Believe and stretch. Reach for the stars on a daily basis. Don't sing someone else's song, but be out of tune. Throw away your slogans and keep your poetry. The happiest people I know enjoy life and don't put it on a shelf. Visit playgrounds and postpone meetings. Get plenty of sugar, but whatever happens, be sure to check in with yourself. The journey is long, and you'll need to be a map. Enjoy sunrises. Don't sleep them away every day. Wake yourself up to that which you have missed. Listen to others, even if you think you know what they're <coughs> going to say. Take advantage. Expect and accept certain imminent events, such as debt and taxes. After those are realized, the rest of life becomes a lot less trivial. Don't put too much stock in makeup. You'll have to wash it off eventually anyway. Always travel to the void where hope meets decision. And don't be afraid to expand. It's worth the risk. If nothing else, remember, we are the class of 2001. Dance. Members of the class of 2001, would you please rise? I welcome you now as alumni of CHS. Please move your tassels to the left side and congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2001.
Thank you.